guys it's Eric at JPC today we are going to do a quick video on the FT600 Pro harness just to see how it fits on a coyote and what comes with the kit all right so this is the Pro harness like the interior branch section of it um, so that we figured we would start with this first kind of work inside of the car towards the engine down here we have uh, your FT600 A and B connectors these plug right back into the fuel tech you know pretty straightforward Ta-da! Uh, these are CAN connectors for any additional CAN devices you want to have. And then it's also pinned over here for Nanos or Nano Pros. They just plug right into that. When you buy a Pro Harness, it comes with this little 3D printed piece, which is basically a jumper for a injector driver. So if you're running high impedance injectors, you're going to keep this plugged in. If it's low impedance, like a 720 or 520, something like that, you're gonna to have to unplug the 3D printed piece and put an injector driver in here. Once we get down to this section, we get towards basically like your bulkhead connector that's gonna go through the firewall, just to kind of give you a reference on, on size. This is probably the most work of the whole install. You have all your additional inputs, outputs, things like that that have to be wired in on your end. They're not pre-done, but they're in connectors in a way that's gonna make them easy for you to, to work with. <clears throat> the white wires are inputs, and these are all numbered uh, one through 20. Some of them, some of the one through 20 is already in the engine room, so we'll get to that shortly. Anything spare is gonna be in this connector here, which it comes with the the other end of it with all the pins so that any additional sensors you want to put in like transmission pressure two-step all that kind of stuff is going to be pinned to this connector our gray connector is ignition outputs so if you're going to use a fuel tech smart coil harness it's going to plug directly into this and that's pretty much going to be the end of that blue is ground outputs so this is you have two options with this if you're going to run two sets of injectors it would be based off of this plug here. If you're not running two sets of injectors, these are just ground outputs to be able to do anything with, like a shifter or boost control, trans brake, whatever you want. Uh, last here we have yellows. These are also outputs. These are kind of unique because they can be ground or power triggers. Uh, you just have to be careful with them because they have a bridge in it, meaning if you're going to ground trigger something, when it's not being used, it'll rest on 12 volts. So if you're sending a 12 volt, it'll rest with ground. And if you're sending a ground, it's gonna rest with 12 volts. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. You got a can connector, um, a second can connector, one here, one here. These are obviously just relays for powering stuff up within the harness. Ignition wire clearly labeled and then you have your your big battery leads and that's that's the gist of the interior portion of it I think another thing to point out here is the quality of the harness um, which may, may or may not have already seen it's all split loom wire um, and it's all laid out and it's numbered full length so if for some reason you ever did want to shorten or change anything about it these numbers go the full length of the wire so you can change yeah, you can shorten it up or change whatever you, you make any modification to it easily but otherwise, the uh, the interior portion of it's pretty pretty straightforward. Again, this is where you got to do most of your work, doing all your boost control and trans brake control, shifters, whatever it is you're going to do. But the the bulk of it's pretty easy. Yeah, I think it's pretty limited on how predetermined they can make it because every car is different. Right. So being able to have it fit anything. Um, is a little difficult to do. All right, so we wanted to sub this part in. This is uh, this is your smart coil harness if you elect to go this way. So again, this comes with a second bulkhead that'll go out to the engine. And on the inside, you get, I don't know, it's probably about 15 feet of heavy gauge, red and black, that's gonna go to your battery. It's got two 30 amp relays, one for basically each bank of the engine. And then in order to hook it up to the 600, just plug it in. 
like that. This is your trigger wire for the relays. FuelTech suggests to use a output from the ECU to trigger this so that the coils don't rest with power on them all the time. That would be in the instructions if you want to read further into it, but basically use a yellow output as an RPM trigger at 100 RPM that will light the coils up to give it spark once it's actually trying to start instead of the coils resting with power all the time. But otherwise, yeah, hooking up the, the smart coil harness, that, that's really it. You get one wire on your end and then the battery terminations and a bulkhead. Yeah, so all the load of the coil is carried in the powering grounds and these are just basically to tell it when to fire the load um, from here to to spark the yeah, sparkler. Yep, exactly. The eight, these eight gray wires in here are your eight your ignition outputs. So they're gonna fire every time it's it's ready to fire. And for simplicity's sake, all of this is really inside the car. The, once these two here go to the bulkhead it, at the firewall, it gets really cleaner. Um, you lose a little bit of this bulk, you won't really see it. All, yeah, this, all stuff this is, is gonna be pretty much behind the dashboard yeah. other than your your heavy power leads, which you know, you've got here and here. And then the rest is just gonna be up behind the dashboard. It's pretty straightforward, easy well laid on out. Extremely well labeled, that's the best thing they do. Everything has labels that are heat shrunk with exactly what they are and what they go to, so yeah. it's really easy to Not figure pretty out. Idiot proof. All right, so we're moving over to the engine side of things for the Pro Harness, and we're gonna start here in the back, which here's where your bulkhead connector that's gonna terminate to the interior branch is, and we've laid it out in here kind of the way that it would go in the car just to give you an idea on what the lengths and everything would be. On the back side, we pulled out what needs to go to the back really. So you have two leads for your O2 sensors. Um, if you're gonna use two or one, doesn't really matter. It's wired for both and they are extra long. So you can go long tube headers or move them to the front of the engine for you know a front exit downpipe or whatever. The other two, three things we got back here is a can hookup for EGT4. Normally these would mount to the firewall or something like that. You get your EGT links to your headers. And last are your cam and crank. These are two pieces that you're gonna have to modify for a Coyote. Uh, obviously a Coyote doesn't have GM style connectors or an MSD, so you're gonna to have to cut these off and, and put the Coyote end on it but uh, and shorten them up. But otherwise, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So that, that would be a part of the wiring that you, you would be responsible for on your end. If we move up here to the kind of the engine part, we this is a GM harness, but we it's, it's the so same it's, essentially. The yeah. yeah, other than the numbering on the injector. So we showed how you can kind of route the injectors. They come pre-done with EV1 connectors on them. Again, this is GM, but they're all labeled and everything be the same on the opposite side. Up here, you're gonna have a couple more sensors that are typically required. Um, you'd either use this as back pressure or you crankcase pressure. Um, it's a general pressure sensor. You can use it for either. You could even use it for dome pressure if you wanted to option it for that. Um, then you'd have your TPS hookup for your throttle body. You would have your air temp sensor for your IETs. And then there's a couple more standard options. Fuel pressure you're gonna need, um, coolant temp. And again, these are generic, so you could technically you'd use them for other things if you wanted to move the links around and just change the pin assignment. Um, but then oil pressure and wastegate pressure for doing boost. So. And that's that's pretty it. As he Mike's showing you, they're kind of long, so yeah. it, it definitely can reach as far as you want. I guess the benefit to a Coyote is you have all this room under the intake that you can kind of stuff some of this stuff up under the intake and, and hide a lot of it. But it, that is the cumbersome part about the Pro Harness. It is universal, so everything's a, a bit long. But it's all there, it's all labeled, and you can cut the stuff to length if you want, or coil it up and kind of stuff it behind the, under the intake or whatever you need to do to make it look presentable. The last thing we wanted to touch base on is their smart coil harness. We went over the interior portion, but this would be the engine section. 
So you got your bulkhead connector here, which is going to connect to there, you know, into your smart coil harness there. But it's the same principle as that. They're all labeled cylinder one through four for each bank with the cylinder head ground, just like they want you to run. Again, it's long, you know what I mean? So you have some options on what you want to do, but basically you get one bank for each of the end of the engine and tie it up and you can be up and running on smart coils in no time. Hopefully that answers a lot of questions about what the Pro Harness actually is and if it'll work for a Coyote. Um, if you guys have any questions, just put them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them.